Okay, so after you get your sluice running, you'll notice that now it takes you a long time to get your dirt all classified so you can run it through the sluice, and then you can run it through the sluice in just a few minutes. That's great. But now the problem is classification. How do we make that process go faster? We use that little classifying screen on top of the bucket, and that works, but it takes a long time to run it. So I came up with a couple of better ways. First the thing I did was take a milk crate, an old milk crate, and a tub. Looks like this. So this plastic tub, find a milk crate that fits inside of it, and in the bottom of the milk crate, I put a 3 8 inch metal screen. This is expanded metal. You can get it from Lowe's or Home Depot or any place like that. Wire it in the bottom so it doesn't come out when you dump it. Now, we fill it up with water. If you're going to set it in the river, you need to set it up against a rock or something so it doesn't blow away on you. And now we just fill it up. Alright, so this crate is full now. Now all we got to do to classify it, and remember how hard it was to do a whole bucket's worth earlier. Grab a hero, gently rock, and rock, rock, up, down. Now everything in there is classified. Now, inside of this, we might have a nugget. We want to check that. So if it's at all possible, find a dry spot in the river, like I built a dam over here that I, you can't see on the camera, but it's over here, and I dump my rocks out on that, and then I inspect them. So take it, and then look at them. If there's a gold nugget that's at any size, you'll see it there. It's important to realize that the odds of finding a large gold nugget are very, very low. Most people walk their entire lives and never find anything bigger than their little fingernail. So finding one, while it's possible, is not worth wasting a whole lot of time staring at your classified rocks and thereby missing hundreds of ounces that you could have found if you just spent more time actually working and less time looking at what might have been there. The other thing is, later, I use my metal detector to go back over my tailings. So if there is a big nugget in there, my metal detector will catch it, so I don't have to spend enough time worrying about it. But even before I had one of those, I still didn't spend a whole lot of time staring at it except a quick glance to see if there was anything large in there. And I never did miss anything, not so far, according to my metal detector. However, this crate had some problems. For one thing, these holes are a little bit large. So for that, we need to put a screen up on the sides so that they don't have any of that problem at all. The other thing is, once this tub is full, it has to be carried to wherever your sluice is so you can sluice it. Now this tub, right now, only has a couple of gallons of dirt, so it's pretty light. So you could carry it like this, but I usually was in a hurry and so I would take it and wait till it was as much dirt as I could possibly put in it, and then dump that in a five-gallon bucket. That meant I was picking up about 80 to 100 pounds of dirt here and trying to wrestle it into a five-gallon bucket without spilling it, and then carrying it. So I had to come up with a better way. At least I decided I wanted to. So I decided that instead of classifying into something that didn't have to be put into the bucket, I wanted to classify directly into the bucket. But I wanted something to be able to fit into the bucket. So I took an ordinary two-gallon bucket and put that same expanded metal mesh in the bottom, screwed it in, and there'll be another video showing how to make this and other classifying material. Set it in the bucket, and then I just scoop into there. So now our two-gallon bucket's full. As you can see, all the way up to the top. Now just push it down in the bucket, shake it, push down and twist at the same time. And now our two-gallon bucket is all classified. And did the same, same thing as before. Stop it like that. And that works pretty well. It works a lot better if you don't fill up quite so much before you classify it, but you can if you need to. I like filling it up about a third of the way or half of the way full. And then it's a lot easier to get it all washed out before you dump it. So, this works well. And it's pretty easy to make. Like I said, we'll have a video on that. But, I was walking a lot of dirt, and I wanted to eat an even better way. So, we built this thing. Now this is that same expanded metal mesh, wrapped around in a circle, welded together, with a bottom welded onto it, and two bolt handles put out here, and a bucket handle put on the top. Now this thing works awesome. You drop it in there, 
fill it up with dirt, shake it around, and I'll just show you. So I mostly filled this up now, and as you can see, there's a lot of stuff in there. Now just drop it down, twist, twist, and it's clean already. A lot less work and a lot less hassle. Plus, you got these nice handles, so you just throw it up and dump it. So, this so far is the best thing I've come up with for classification. Some people call this process a grizzly because they used to make these big boxes that went on top of the sluices, they called them grizzlies. But really it's a classifying screen. So now the next weak link in our gold process is getting the dirt out of the creek and into the bucket. Because now we've got the dirt classified very well, we've got a sluice to process the dirt. But now, if you take a shovel, you scoop, you bring it up, you scoop, you bring it up, it takes hundreds of times to fill a bucket. You need a bigger shovel, and they make shovels that have special wide uh, lips on the edges of them that hold more dirt. But I looked at all that and I thought there had to be a better way. So now this is what we do. So take a two gallon bucket and take a scoop. Any scoop will work, but I like these scoops here. They're treasure hunting scoops. They're very strong, they're made out of plastic, so they won't react with the metal detector is why they invented them. And they really work really well to scoop into the bucket. I'm going to take this down and set it under the water. Get positioned, and then use the other scoop with my thumb underneath here, and just push into that bucket. And I do that until I get the bucket about half full, or until it becomes inconvenient to scoop. And then I dump. And this is about five or ten times faster than using a shovel. So now already I've got enough to classify. Now I can grab it like this, pull it up. And there's my finished product. So dump it. And go back for the next load. At the end of the day, finding gold is about hard work, hard thinking, and mostly being able to process more dirt than anybody else. If you work hard, that's great, but if you don't do it the right way, a way that makes sense, then you're wasting your time, and a lot of people do that. This way, you can work hard, and you can process up five times more dirt than anybody else in the creek, because you're using good tools. And these tools are a good investment, even if they take you a day to make them, or it's $100 to buy them. Whatever it takes, these tools are a good investment, because they're going to allow you to work a lot more when you do get to the creek, and get a lot more done for the effort that you do expend. So this is one of the mainstays of our system. This really allows us to move more dirt than most people can. So if you have two people, a good system is for one person to be in the river with a bucket, scooping it up, the other person to be right over here running this classifying screen. You scoop and dump, they shake it and dump, and you just about keep up with each other that way, and then you get a couple of buckets full and you run it over to the sluice and you run that, and that's your day's work. Just keep doing that all day long as long as your back can handle it, and then you uh, collect your gold at the end.